Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are going to look at a very interesting puzzle or a riddle if you will. It is basically a mathematical probabilistic problem which you may have seen in your probability theory or mathematics class or even a statistical course that you might have been taking. So the problem is basically uh, known as something like three-way duel or a three-way standoff between three persons by the name of Anna, Bob, and Christian. And the thing is that they are supposed to kill each other. So these are shooters. So they are going to shoot at each other in a three-way duel and they shoot at each other in turns. And we have to calculate in some ways the probabilities of winning and so on. So let's have a look at what the problem is. So the problem says that Christian has a success rate of 33.33% Bob 50% and Anna 100%. Now what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is that these shooters, the three shooters involved in this duel, are not 100% accurate when they shoot someone. So if they try to shoot someone, it is not necessarily guaranteed that the person will die. And um, the strike rate or the expertise is exhibited through these numbers. So Christian is kind of the worst shooter of all. He only shoots uh, with a um, you know strike rate of 33.3% that corresponds to one third probability. Bob is slightly better. He shoots with a strike rate of 50%. So he's um, going to kill you half of the total number of times he shoots you. However, Anna over here is an expert shooter. She's definitely going to kill you if she tries to shoot you. So the problem says that you're Christian and you have to decide who do you shoot first? Do you shoot Bob or do you shoot Anna? And there's one more option actually. It's not just these two. You can even intentionally miss. You can miss on purpose. So since you are the worst shooter, you get an advantage. That is you go first and then Bob and then Anna. So the turns look something like this. So you, Christian, will go first with the worst strike rate, then Bob and then Anna. This is because you have a disadvantage. Now, what do you think? Who would you like to shoot first, Bob or Anna or Miss? Now, before I tell you the solution, let's have a look at some of the assumptions that we have made. So the first assumption, as I've already stated, is that players can miss on purpose. That is, they can intentionally miss. Secondly, we assume that the players are rational and logical thinkers. That is, they seek to make decisions that will maximize their chances of winning. They're not going to make decisions emotionally or just to you know sabotage your chances of winning. They are going to make decisions um, based on mathematical reasoning. Now let's have a look at the qualitative solution. So I say that it is actually too risky to shoot either Anna or Bob in the first round. Why do I say so? So let's imagine that you as Christian decided to shoot Bob first in the first round. Now let's assume a scenario where even though you have only one third chance of killing him, you did manage to kill him. Now let's imagine, so you are Christian, you managed to kill him. The next turn is of Anna, what she's going to do. She's going to definitely kill you off with a hundred percent chance. She's an expert marksman. So this scenario doesn't work out too well for you. Now let's have a look at the scenario where you decided to shoot at Anna first. And also again, imagine that even though you have a very low probability, you did actually manage to kill her. Now what's next? Next is Bob's turn as we have already established. So now you are in a situation where Bob gets to shoot next and he's a, a shooter with a better strike rate than you. So it doesn't look too well. So what I'm saying is that it becomes an unfavorable situation for you if you're the only one left against either Anna or Bob. So what is the solution? The solution is actually that it is when you miss intentionally that you create a situation where Bob and Anna have to face off each other. So let's consider this scenario that you have shot in the air and missed on purpose. Now, what do you think Bob will do in his turn next. Of course he's going to target Anna and if he doesn't manage to kill her then what do you think will Anna do next? Of course she's going to target Bob because they both are the bigger threats to each other. So what I'm saying is that Bob and Anna are logical and rational thinkers 
and will only target each other as they are bigger threats than Christian for them. Let me elaborate a bit. There is a 50% chance that Bob will kill Anna and if he doesn't, then Anna will kill Bob certainly. So this seems to be a logical choice for Bob that he needs to shoot Anna first, otherwise his death is certain. So why would he make such a decision where his death is certain? So therefore, once we create this situation where Bob and Anna face off each other, at the very least, we are guaranteed a second round where we have a 50% probability or rather chance of either facing Bob or Anna. Why do I say that we have a 50% chance of facing either Bob or Anna? Is because um, Bob will kill Anna with a probability of 50%. So if she manages to live, then she will of course kill Bob certainly. So there's just a half probability of uh, Anna surviving and similarly a half probability of Anna dying. Now once Christian has managed to get to the second round, he still has one more advantage. So not only we have lengthened the duration for which he stays alive, that is we have uh, ensured his survival a little longer than others, we have also increased his chances slightly because now in the second round he gets his turn first. So he will be the first shooter and whoever he is facing on our Bob at the very least he will have a one third chance of killing them. So he gets an advantage that is he shoots first with one player eliminated already. In conclusion, the probability of Christian winning is higher by having one, one player eliminated for free. Therefore, I say that qualitatively, it seems to me that, of course, Christian should miss. Now let's have a look at a quantitative solution. This time we will deal with numbers. Now in order to consider the quantitative solution, we first need to calculate the probabilities of Christian winning in different scenarios. Scenarios such as when Christian is in only a two-way standoff against Bob or when he's in a two-way standoff with Anna. So we will not consider the third person in this picture. We will only consider the face-offs or standoffs of Christian individually with just one other person in, this in these scenarios. So let's consider two-way face-off with Anna. Let's um, just uh, deactivate Bob for a moment. So let's say Christian shoots Anna. Now there is a one-third probability that he'll kill her and Anna will die and Christian will win. So we'll say that Christian has a 33% chance of winning. Similarly, if um, he misses, of which there is a greater chance to third, then of course Anna will survive. And since this is only a two-way standoff, there is no Bob here involved. So of course Anna will definitely kill Christian off. So in this scenario, the only way Christian wins is um, if he manages to kill her with a 33.33% chance. Now let's consider a two-way face-off with Bob. This is going to be a bit tricky because neither of them is certain to kill each other. So let's imagine that Christian shoots Bob. As we have already established that he will manage to kill him and win with the probability of 33.3%. However, if he manages to miss him, then of course Bob, it will be Bob's turn next and he'll shoot Christian next. And this time what will happen is Bob will manage to kill Christian, of course, with a probability of 50% and he will win it and the duel would end. However, if he doesn't, then Christian will survive and get to shoot Bob next and this would be the starting of the round two. Now, this scenario where Christian shoots Bob is exactly the same as the one we started from. So what we can basically do is for round two, we can just copy and paste this entire thing that we have over here and we get something like this. So we get another situation where he kills Bob with a chance of one third and misses and then Bob shoots and so on. So what we do get over here is we get an infinite chain or an infinite tree, so to speak, where Christian and Bob keep on facing off each other until one of them dies and this tree goes on forever, like third round and so on. So what? How will you manage to calculate the probability of Christian winning in such a scenario? So let me make it more clear for you or make it easier. Let's just consider the chances of Christian winning in the first round. So if you just have a look at this first round tree over here, how many places do you see Christian winning? It's just one. I have written Christian wins only in this scenario. And what is the probability of reaching this scenario from here? The probability is one third. So what we do is that probabilities of Christian winning in first round are one third. 
Now let's calculate the probabilities of Christian winning within the second round. Now let's count the number of places where I've written Christian wins. So as you can see over here, we only have Christian winning over here. So what is the probability of Christian winning uh, here? So it is one third from this event, but this event comes from this event with a probability of half. So the probabilities will need to be multiplied because these events are consecutive. So you must remember that whenever the events are consecutive or simultaneous, then you multiply the probabilities. So since we get this event only from this event, which again has a probability of half, and again, this event comes from this parent event, which has a probability of two thirds. So what would be the total probability? It would be two thirds multiplied by half, multiplied by one third. So the chances of winning in the second round are these. Now let's calculate the chances of winning within the third round. I haven't shown it here, but you can still imagine, I believe. So let's just do some multiplications. You do two thirds times one third times two third times half. So you definitely need to multiply all these to get to the third round. So you get something like two third times one half times two third times one half, as I've shown up till here. And then in the third round, just like what we have up in the previous rounds, he wins with the probability of one third. So we just put one, uh, one third over here. So I hope you are able to get this trend over here. Now we can write these uh, probabilities in terms of a series summation. So what that, does that look like? It looks like one third summed over zero to infinity, two third multiplied by half to the power i. Now let's uh, make this math slightly simpler. So we have this formula over here. Now what I would like to point out is that it is actually a geometric series and you might know that the sum of an infinite geometric series with common ratios less than one can be given by S equals A1 divided by one minus R, where A1 is the first term of the series and R is the common ratio. However, there is a catch. The infinite, this formula only holds when the geometric series starts from I equals one. So what we are going to do is, we are going to take out um, the term where I equals zero because here we have a sum where I starts from zero to infinity. So we'll just take out one term where i equals one. So we get one third out here. And then we write down the series from one to infinity. And the ratio of the consecutive terms, you can see is one third, then one over nine, then one over 27. So what would be the common ratio? The common ratio is actually written as the ratio of the second term divided by the, or rather the ratio of the second term to the first term. So in this case, the ratio is simply one third you might want to pause the video and think about it why is that the case so the ratio is of course less than one so what we can do is we can use this formula actually so we do first term which is one third in this series because i starts from one divided by one minus the common ratio which is again one third and we get the probability of christian winning in this two-way face-off with bob as half so isn't that interesting even though he has a lower strike rate, that is one third. He has a 50% chance of winning against Paul. This is really great news for Christian. However, this is not uh, what we are dealing with in the question. These are only scenarios when he's facing off with Anna and Bob uh, individually. Now, but what we are going to do is we are going to use this information that we have learned right now to consider the, the scenarios in our questions. So let's now analyze the three possible scenarios. The first possible scenario is the simplest one that I'm going to consider, that is when he misses on purpose. Let's call this the scenario one. When Christian misses on purpose, the next turn would be of Bob because we are going in a clockwise manner. And next what Bob will do is he will either manage to kill Anna with a probability of 50% or he'll manage to miss her with a probability of 50%. Let's see the scenario where he manages to kill her. Then the next term would be of Christian. And can you remember or recognize this scenario? We have already considered this two-way standoff of Christian with Bob, where he gets to shoot first, which is what exactly we did in the previous slide. So what it was the probability of Christian winning in this scenario? It was actually exactly half. We had already calculated in the previous slide that in such a two-way scenario against Bob where Christian gets to shoot first, 
he wins half of the time and half of the times Bob wins. So what would be the exact probability of Christian winning if Bob indeed managed to kill Anna and we went down this tree branch? The probability would be half multiplied by half, that is one fourth. Now let's consider the scenario where Bob actually missed Anna. So the next turn would be of Anna because we are going in a clockwise manner and she'll certainly kill Bob as he's a bigger threat to her. And again, the next turn would be of Christian and he will get to shoot uh, Anna first. And we have already calculated this scenario as well earlier. And even if we hadn't, it is very simple to calculate that either he hits her and wins with a probability of one third or he misses and then Anna is certain to finish him off. Therefore, the total probability of Christian winning if we bend down this branch over here is half multiplied by one third as I've already established that these consecutive events need to be multiplied. So the total probability of Christian winning in scenario one where he misses would be if we go this way then it would be one fourth and if we go this way then it would be one over six. So the total probability of, will be one fourth plus one over six gives us five by twelve. That is approximately 42%. It seems kind of good actually, in my opinion. Now let's consider the scenario two, where Christian decides to shoot Bob first. So when Christian decides to shoot Bob first, he may manage to kill him with a chance of one third, but then it will be Anna's turn next and she will finish Christian off certainly. So it doesn't look very good, this scenario. So now let's consider the scenario where he actually missed. This time it would be Bob's turn and of course Bob will shoot Anna because for him Anna is a bigger threat than Christian as we have already established. Now the interesting thing over here is that we have actually already calculated the probability of Christian winning in a scenario where Bob shoots Anna. Do you remember it? It was actually in the previous slide as I can show you here. So as you can see over here that in this slide when we consider that Christian missed on purpose, then Bob shoots Anna was the next logical step. And we had already calculated the probability that came out to be 42%. So we can simply use this probability in our tree. So we don't need to make a more complicated tree than we already have. So let's use that over here. So we had calculated that in this scenario, Christians, Christian wins with a probability of 5 12, and there is no probability of Christian winning in this scenario. So the total probability of Christian winning when he shoots Bob first would be 2 third multiplied by 5 by 12. That gives us 5 over 18. That is 27%. So as you can already see that shooting Bob first is um, less profitable for Christian than missing on purpose or rather shooting in the air. Now let's have a look at the final scenario, the scenario number three, where Christian decides to shoot Anna first. Now, if he manages to kill her, with a probability of one third, then it would be Bob's turn next and we will get a two-way face-off with Bob and Christian. However, this is different than what we had already considered. What we had considered was Christian shooting Bob first. So we cannot just use that probability that we had called calculated earlier here. But what we can do is we can try to um, make a tree once again and see how it goes. So let's see this scenario. Bob shoots and manages to kill Christian half of the time and this scenario ends here. However, when he misses, then Christian gets to shoot Bob first and this is the uh, scenario, the probability of which we had already calculated. And that is a two-way face-off with Christian shooting Bob first. So what we can do right now is we can simply say that in this scenario over here where Christian shoots Bob first, uh, he will win with a probability of half as we had already established. You may want to pause the video and go back if you don't remember that, but we said that the probability would be half in a two-way standoff against Bob. And what we will do is we will just multiply the chance of winning over here that is half times the previous probability that was half times one-third. So we get to Christian winning by going like this, one-third, one-half, and one-half. So that is the probability of Christian winning when he manages to kill Anna. And if he manages to miss her, which would happen two thirds of the times, then it will be Bob's turn next. And we have already established that he will try to kill Anna first. And again, we see this scenario, the probability of which we have already calculated 
to be 5 over 12. Now, I mean, the probability of Christian winning in this scenario, we have already calculated to be 5 over 12. So the total probability would be 2 third multiplied by 5 12. And so the total probability of Christian winning in this scenario, 3, where he shoots Anna first, would be around 36%, which is still less than the probability of him winning when he missed on purpose that is shot in the air and higher than the probability of Christian winning when he shot Bob first. So let's have a look at the winning percentages for different scenarios. So we see that when he misses on purpose, he is most likely to win. And this might seem very counterintuitive or like something where your common sense fails. And this is exactly why you need mathematical analysis like this, because our common sense can fail sometimes. We see that actually intentionally missing maximize the chances of winning for Christians and uh, ironically it was the worst shooter Christian that had the best chances of winning in this in, in this uh, puzzle. Can you tell why was that so? Actually that was because he was given the first chance and also because it was Bob's turn next. So that is why actually Christian uh, gets a very reasonable or very comfortable winning percentage in this um, riddle. Now that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it really interesting and learned something from it. In case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now before I sign off I want to really thank a YouTube channel and a YouTube creator who had actually posted the solution to this puzzle already and I have basically just taken that, put some images and made it slightly fancier. And that is all. So um, you might, if you have seen that already, then it's very good. If you haven't, then I would recommend to uh, check him out. It's a very good explanation that he does. So yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.